um, ARRL has announced today that the comment deadline set for on proposed 60 meter band changes has just been opened up. Uh, if you remember back in um, oh, April of this year, the FCC announced, uh, made a notice of, um, oh, what, what's it, in, in our, in our, in, um, a notice of rulemaking. I, I can't remember proposed the exact rulemaking, acronym. I think. Proposed right? notice of proposed rulemaking yes. that they wanted to make some changes to the 60 meter band in order to have it align with the 2015 uh, World Radio Teleconference. Uh, and what that means is that um, right now, if you're familiar with 60 meters, we've got five discrete channels, um, and you can uh, you run you know you run in those channels and you're limited to 150 watts um, EIRP or roughly One, 100 watts ERP. 150? I think it was isn't it 150 or is it 100 watts? I 100, thought it was 100. 100. 100 watts EIRP. Yes. Yeah, and I think uh, 30 That's, meters is 200. No, it says well it says affected radiated power of 100 watts. Yep. So, so 100 on 100 mm -hmm. on 60. Yep. Yep. Um, the change, which would align with the um, 2015 World Radio Radio Communication Conference, is to only allow 15 kilohertz of contiguous spectrum and a, a power level of only 15 watts EIRP, which is roughly 9.1 watts of ERP. Um, so... If you remember the the US, the federal government is the primary user of the of that of that spectrum that five megahertz spectrum in the in the um, 60, 60 meter band and um, so this actually so the so the league is proposing that or they're they're asking that the FCC keep the channels. And keep the power limits, but also give us that little bit of extra spectrum, because these um, the sixty meter band actually works as a very good um, gateway between uh, amateur radio and um, governmental and non governmental organizations, because it's you know since we're a secondary we've got a secondary allocation on these frequencies we can interface with NGOs or government agencies and communicate, easily communicate between them on us using our amateur uh, spectrum and them, the, them using the 60 meter band. But in the end, this is really trying to bring us into alignment with the rest of the world that yep. has 60 meter access, so. So, and, so. and now, com, now consider this, even though the rest of the world is has got those, the 60 meter limits that the um, FCC is proposing. Canada does not. They they at this point they're still continuing to use the five discrete channels and the higher power limits. Right. And also, one of the advantages of the higher power and those five channels is that sixty meters actually works quite well into uh, Central America, the Caribbean islands, and it's been used um, quite frequently as a resource uh, during uh, hurricanes and, mm -hmm. and during, you know, as uh, for um, hurricane communications abilities, you know, with between the islands and also between the islands and, 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 and coastal U S. So, right. it's, uh, you know, it's, yeah. So I would, you know, I've ever, I've never heard government, um, government traffic except on like channel one i think it was one of the big hurricanes down in texas a few years ago there was some trap females on channel one mm -hmm. um, other than that i've never heard it so i guess how much does the government even use those channels <laughs> that's you know, a good question yeah i i guess you know there, there's another thing too to ask is how much are they actually doing on this so yeah um, yeah a lot of i mean i'm all in favor of you know giving us more bandwidth that's great um, but this is one where there's going to be some challenges, I think. It's just like six, uh, 630 and 2200 meters, uh, when they opened that up a few years ago. There's still nothing really commercially made out there for those bands. We're all making no. them ourselves. 
That stuff um, is all, yeah, that's all homebrew stuff. Yeah, there's so. there's some kits and stuff out there now, but um, realistically, if they're going to open it up, uh, I think you still got to leave the channel just because everyone has, in the past 15 years, every radio that's made has 60 meter capabilities. Yep. Um, so you're basically going to uh, just throw that out the window if you if you delete that. And then they're going to all have to go buy another radio or hope that Icom and Yesu does something to open them up. Yeah, or they're able to um, mod it or something. So, right. Yeah. Hell yeah, Alexander brings up a good point. Most 100-watt radios won't transmit that low, even if you set it for 5 watts, you know. Um, it could be, you know, it, it could be higher. So Right, right. So peak envelope power, and of course... That that's always a kicker is that, you know, hey, so you're maybe running uh, an amp at an average of 900 or 1,000 watts, but you're peaking over 1,500, right? Yeah. Kind of the same thing when you're running <laughs> low power, too. Your QRP and you're running 5 watts, and that's kind of average. You may actually hit 8 or 9 sometimes on bigger peaks. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that has to be taken into consideration, too. I don't think that's a big issue. I mean, those peaks aren't really you know, wrecking it for everyone, so to yeah. say, especially yeah. at that low power, but um, we'll see. I I, yeah, we'll see. I am interested to see what the FCC does of this. Yep, yep, yep. So, and if you want to make your voice heard um, on this this article, you'll, you'll find the link to the article just right off the main page on the ARL website. They've got a link right here. W the docket number is WT-23-120. And that'll take you to the FCC and you can submit a filing. Beautiful. So, yeah. So easy a caveman could do it. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, something like that. So, KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpol-antenna.com.